Chief Financial Officer. And I'd first like to start out by thanking Rivmont and, and Matthew. What a terrific, uh, thank you for hosting this. It's a terrific event. And congratulations to, to Cameron. You're a very difficult act to follow here. Uh, so you've made my job very difficult. But what I can tell this group is, if you like a turnaround story and you like an undervalued company, you're going to love us. So uh, with that said, if we can, uh, where is the, uh... so perhaps I'll, I'll start out with just a, a very brief uh, history. Um, in 2019, uh, we were an acquisition company called Salona Medical Global Device Corporation. Some of you may have heard of that company. And it went out and it acquired a number of companies and the, and the stock went, went very high and, and the, the company was doing quite well. But during that time, uh, the management team didn't seem to really integrate the company very well. And pretty quickly, the, the profits were, were being eaten up by the overhead uh, that they didn't integrate these six companies that they acquired. Um, that mounting losses and the acquisition debt was very, very difficult to, to service. So I came in in June of 2023, and the mission was immediately get cash flow going again, which we did, uh, and immediately start working on our debt. So we were able to reduce and extend our debt. Gordon will, will give you a preview, a uh, show you of, of what we've done there, uh, and also get the biodex business really rolling again. And we're going to show you what we've accomplished in, in a relatively short period of time. But just to kind of give a background of the, of the business that we're in, we are in the medical device business, specifically in the physical medicine recovery science space. So our customers are physical therapists, athletic trainers, even orthopedic surgeons to an extent. And it's a large marketplace. I mean, all you have to do is look out and see uh, an older, more active population out there playing pickleball, twisting ankles and having injuries. We've all been there. I see people smiling at me right now. Uh, and so we make products that help diagnose and help uh, patients recover from those injuries. Our, our primary brand is called Biodex Rehab. And Biodex is actually a 30-year-old company. And a, uh, it is a gold standard in the industry. If you're a physical therapist getting trained at university, you are being trained on a Biodex machine. We sell primarily to institutions and academic research centers, as well as probably every single major sports team in the world has our Biodex machine. And that's on the right. We also have a number of other companies. One is Daymar Plastics, and the other is South Dakota Partners. These are contract manufacturing organizations. In a minute, we're going to talk to you about how we're divesting those companies to address our balance sheet. So. As I said, we're, we're, we've turned around this business, and I would say that we have now stabilized it. Uh, and that's taken about, about a year, but uh, we've had now, as you can see, this is our, uh, our data from our last earnings report. So actually, uh, and Gordon's going to talk about the, uh, the most recent quarter, our third quarter, but uh, here you see three out of the four last quarters, we were able to uh, have a positive adjusted EBITDA. It's now four out of five quarters. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, we've really solidified, uh, focused on the Biodex business, and we know exactly what we need to sell in order to make that business really strong and profitable. Uh, we've been proactively really reducing our debt. Uh, and like I said, Biodex is a globally recognized brand. We've got over 15,000 customers and 52 distributors around the world today. So I'm going to turn it over to Gordon to uh, walk you through the, the financial highlights. Sure. Thanks, Mike. So the quarter uh, two numbers that we're uh, going to present here, these have been published. Um, we uh, issued a press release August 12th for the Q2 results. Now, the $10.5 million in revenue, 6.1 of that came from our core business, which is Biodex. The other pieces would be 2.1 from Damar and 1.9 from South Dakota Partners. Now, as Mike mentioned, we had acquired a bunch of businesses over the last little while. One of the biggest things was that we were building our top line, but we were not, as he said, integrating. So we were not being smart, and we were making extra money, with, but losing on the bottom line. So one of the things that we decided to do was to really come back and get back to the core, which is what Biodex is. And I'll talk about um, how we're looking to divest. But as you can see, the numbers in Q2 were very good. 
We had a 59% in revenue growth over the prior quarter. Our gross margin of $3.3 million, 2.3 of that was from the core business of Biodex. Um, and the growth for over the prior quarter was 104%. Now, just one little caveat, of course, was Q1. We did a bit of a retooling because in order to right the ship, we needed to restructure how we looked at the business and how we were planning to grow the business. But the results, as you could see, are very positive now. We generated uh, $429,000 in EBITDA for Q2. That's a $1.7 million growth over the prior quarter. And just to give comparison, we had acquired Biodex a year prior, and that was a $1.4 million growth over the prior year uh, Q2, and a growth of 184%. Um, but one of the biggest things that we've been really structure, uh, really doing to structure the business was to fix our balance sheets. And a big part of that is that we have a fair bit of debt, most of it coming from acquisition. So in Q2, we reduced our debt by $2.7 million. 2.6 of that was acquisition debt, and just under 0.2 is from debt related to our credit line. Now, I will talk a bit about Q3, but that was when we first did the slide. We already started off, we're paying down the credit line in July. More is paid down in August, and I'll get when we get to the next slide. But our uh, break-even for the core business of Biodex is revenue of about four and a half million per quarter. We've been exceeding that, and as you can see, our uh, revenues of about 6.1 for Biodex is 34% over our break-even number. So this is a snapshot of Q3. Now this is where we're projecting. We're looking to be a tiny bit less revenue um, in Q3 than Q2, but a big part of this is the FX rate between the US and the Canadian dollar. It's come down a little bit in the last little bit, but in US dollars, they're actually pretty comparable. And of that, 5.5 is coming from uh, the core business of Biodex. We're expecting to generate almost the same gross margin of 3.2, and about two million of that's gonna be from the core business. And we're looking to also generate a positive EBITDA for the core business. So that'll be four of the last five quarters that we've managed to turn a positive EBITDA for the business. The only non-positive was Q1 of this year where we did a retooling of our business. Now the other interesting thing and one of the areas that we're really most proud of is that we've also reduced and or will be expected to have reduced our debt by over $2.1 million in Q3. Combining Q2 and Q3, that's nearly $5 million of debt that we've taken off our balance sheet. The difference in this quarter, though, was we focused a lot of that on repayments of our credit line. One of our businesses had high debt on their credit line. We've been paying this down, and as um, we're talking a little bit later about the divesting of the business, We've positioned this company now to sell and take away all our debt and still make a profit, which three months ago was unheard of. So we're uh, reducing our debt. We've already had interested parties who have approached. Um, we've had nine um, NDAs signed for Damar, and we've already had a letter of intent for South Dakota Partners. They've been on site. They've met with um, our team, and now they're just we're looking to try to get this wrapped up in the next little bit. So our, basically that's it. We're um, looking to have about 22, hopefully to 25% over break even for uh, Q3. So we've gone from writing the ship to stabilizing the core business. So one of the things is that we're looking to sell Damar and that's gonna help eliminate most if not all of our debt. The ways we uh, looked at the valuation of the company, we took a two-pronged approach. The first side, we said, okay, let's get some comparables. So we had an outside third party provide us with some comps to see where the selling prices can be. We also did a discounted cash flow where we took some conservative assumptions on the market and we tried to get a rough sense of where we can get with our valuation. Our valuation, we're figuring around 13.6. That would eliminate pretty much all of the uh, remaining debt that we have. But you know, we, if we get a good price, obviously, for uh, Daymar, we will still be considering it. But the goal is, of course, to clean up the balance sheet, 
to really have a much stronger asset to liability ratio and generate more um, cash without having to keep paying down interest and debt. So with uh, Avome, with Biodex only, we're looking for um, forward-looking numbers for the next 12 months of running of around $27.5 million with a gross profit of 10 and about 2 million of EBITDA. Now, this isn't all going to be from manufacture of our medical devices. This will be also looking at licensing agreements, among other things that Mike will discuss a bit later. But the only thing we're expected to have is uh, our asset based line, which is um, tied to our receivables with Biodex. So, this is money that, while they've advanced us, we will be able to have this repaid within. It will be constantly cycled. So this is the kind of debt we would rather have once we finish with uh, cleaning out all the others. So I'm going to turn back to Mike, and he'll talk about our growth plan. Thank you, Gordon. So <clears throat> our journey has been uh, a, a, an interesting path, but we're on the way to cleaning up this company completely. Now it's time to focus on growth. And the growth, the way we look at it, is we've got a terrific brand here. Uh, a 30-year brand, uh, 15,000 customers, 52 distributors around the world, and we don't necessarily need a lot of capbacks, if capbacks, if any, to make this business run. Why? Because we've got a great brand, we've got great distribution, we can bring in any number of products with very little capbacks. There's, we have got four products today that are just terrific, but there's literally thousands of medical device companies out there that are looking for a place with Biodex, a name and a distribution network that we can find these, these products uh, very, very rapidly. We're, we've made a lot of progress already. We'll probably have a number of products uh, uh, lined up here. We, we will have a product licensed by the end of the year. Our plan is to license one product every single quarter thereafter, so we'll have strong deal flow. Uh, the Biodex brand name, we're targeting products that are 25 to 40% low capex, uh, with an option to acquire attractive IP. Uh, as we've said, we've gotten a lot of initial conversations and six NDAs signed, so we're, we're on our way. So we've got a, an established brand. Uh, we've got a strong patient uh, uh, opportunity. It's a growing population. Uh, we have products that are addressing neurological conditions, osteoporosis, joint replacements. Again, we've got a strong distribution network and a, a, a wealth of customers around the world. Um, I'm the, uh, the CEO. I'm, I'm generally a, a pharma guy. I've been in pharmaceuticals, biotech, and gene therapy for a long time, but I've also been in the device world. Uh, Gordon's been a terrific addition to the team. We've got a, a terrific new board of directors who I've known for many, many years. Uh, they've been very supportive, and uh, we think we just have a terrific, a terrific team go moving forward here. Uh, here's our cap structure. Why don't you walk us through the cap structure real quick? Sure. So obviously, the big piece of it is our common stock. We have uh, some Class A and some to be issued. I suspect the uh, ones to be issued probably won't. We have some warrants that look like they're expiring within the year, and some options. And the options, of course, uh, right now, the uh, unfortunately, our stock price is trading a little bit below the average weighted price. So I suspect that that number should be going down a little bit over the next year, too. But right now, our fully diluted shares are about 104 million. That should be changing as well. The uh, stock actually, after our Q2 earnings, uh, was trading a little well, quite well, and we're starting to see a bit of a resurgence in the price. So hopefully uh, we'll be selling more common and the price will be going up, especially as we look to reduce our debt. Thank you, Gordon, thank you. And so that concludes our presentation. We went fast because I know you all want to drink and I'm happy to take any, any questions you may have. What are the class issues? Those were issued that are not on the same level. You could convert them on a one-to-one, -one, but they're not voting shares or anything like that. They're almost like preferred stock. Uh, I, I read that uh, you said that the market's going to grow by 20 to 30% for therapeutic services. So I would like to know on what you 
base your analysis for this? What did they get there? So we showed an annual growth rate of around 4% in the physical therapy marketplace. So I'm not exactly sure what growth you're talking about. Uh, there was a $49 million market size growing around 4% annually. So maybe, maybe I'm not sure, exactly sure what you're referring to. But it's a, bi it's a big growing market. That's the good news. There's lots of patients out there that, that, that need rehab. We're expected to be 22% uh, growth in our business, but uh, that's just uh, part of the business. It's not... Uh, Oh, absolutely. The U.S. has been graying quite a bit, and as people get older, as Mike mentioned, they get hurt. People are living longer, they're more active, but there's definitely more need for rehabilitation. What do you think investors misunderstand the most about the business right now? Our balance sheet. So, so clearly, uh, we've got a, a ways to go before we, we completely uh, get to a position where we've got all we'll have is no acquisition debt, uh, our debt will only be on our receivable, our, our typical ABL on our receivables and our inventory. Um, and so that's when we feel the business will really, really be stable. And, and um, so that said, uh, I think we're very undervalued right now. We've been able to uh, execute on every single plan that we've outlined. Um, and I'm very confident that we'll be able to divest those, those companies. I can tell you that the the diligence that happened last week, we have a meeting with them on Friday. We think that that will close relatively quick. Uh, Damar is only one of two plastic manufacturers in the entire state of California. So we're, we're, we're getting a lot of interest on that company. And- uh, well, Damar's whole specialty, right? Because for, the cla for plastic manufacturers, they're one of two in the entire st uh, Southern California that does both injection and blow molding. And those are both very specialized in the uh, plastics manufacturing field. So as a result, especially with blow molding, because most people want to buy this uh, domestically because they take up a lot of space and in order to ship them internationally, the companies would charge through the roof. So hence the reason that, you know, to buy them made and manufacture them domestically would be the way to go. Sorry. Uh, two questions. Um, you open to raising uh, capital? If if it's if it makes sense for us at the right time. Right now, obviously, you know, raising capital to, to help our debt situation is not going to happen. So, but once we get once we clean up our balance sheet and we're on our way, and we we envision seeing. I'm I'm taking a lot of calls right now through these these licensing discussions I'm having. There's a number of really attractive opportunities out there that we could probably go back to the capital markets and, and, and show a pathway forward to really increasing the value of the company. Um, but not until we, we get to that point. And, and in the meantime, Biodex, as you saw through the pro, pro forma, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a strong business. It's, it's not exciting to, to, uh, to show a, a you know, $2 million, $3 million EBITDA on a $27 million business. But it is a strong business. I always like to say that when you've got um, creditors that are really happy with you and customers that really want your product, something good is going to happen. And that's what's happening to us right now. Yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I, did, I just also wanted to add, the reason we're not looking to uh, raise capital for, right now is because our stock price is lower than we want it to be. Every investor who we've spoken to have said, once you fix your balance sheet, that's going to help fix the stock price. And then we're going to be much more amenable to looking for capital raise. But we don't want to raise money to pay debt. We want to raise money to grow the business, which is a smarter way to look at it. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.